our primary legislation, the Money Laundering and Process of Crime Amendment Act, was accepted recently by His Excellency, uh, the President of the 17th of February 2020, and whose main focus is to deal with unexplained wealth. So we have an act uh, which has just been accepted to by His Excellency. On another note, I'm also happy to advise that the companies and other business entities amendment act, which among other issues, sets out the legal framework for the collection and maintenance of beneficial ownership information came into effect on the 13th of February, 2020. This is buttressed by the recent uh, promulgation of the Deeds Registries Amendment Act, which uh, mandates the Register of Deeds to commence uh, registering beneficial ownership relating to legal arrangements such as trusts. I would again like to appeal to all members and stakeholders to cooperate in this challenging time to effectively address serious crime activities in the country. As we are aware, we live in a world where money laundering, terrorism, and weapons of mass destruction have become a concern for all countries. There's also an action plan, there's a strategic plan that's covering the period uh, 2020 to year 2025, which has got four pillars, which are trying to plug whatever gaps still persist. The first pillar of the strategy is really uh, raising awareness, uh, capacitating the, the various institutions, the regulators, so they're, they're able to recognize uh, money laundering uh, possibilities. Uh, the second pillar is really to recognize that there are various institutions that need to work in parallel in order to, to deal with money laundering, to assess the risks of, of money laundering, but they must also collaborate. And number three, we should also make sure that we move faster on, on this beneficial honor gap, and I'm pleased that the act is now in place to make sure that we can track and trace the beneficial owners of any money laundering process. And finally, uh, the issue of asset forfeiture. It's very important as a country to have a sense of financial governance. So, so over time, uh, uh, we'll find a way to make sure that uh, through the, the, this work on anti-money money, anti -money laundering and, and, and the risks that it poses, we're also able to put in place a kind of overall financial governance architecture that will improve the governance of finances uh, and make sure that we move to a higher level of financial uh, security.